Welcome back. In this lecture, we will look at an important limiting case that simplifies the analysis of electrochemical transport. This limiting case is wherein there is no concentration gradient. So this is an approximation, but that's a, going to be a useful approximation for analyzing the system. So in the previous class, we had introduced the Nernst-Planck equation. And this equation takes into account the three mechanisms, right? Migration, diffusion, and convection. In this lecture, we will see how we can arrive at a limiting case wherein only migration is important. That is, these two terms are going to be negligible and all the analysis would depend upon migration. We'll see how we arrive at such a situation. So as we had mentioned earlier, there are three mechanisms for electrochemical transport. You are probably aware from your fluid mechanics class about convection. Okay, so this is, we're not going to be dealing with that uh, in this set of lectures, because this most of these issues have been taken into account in your fluid mechanics class. In your mass transfer class, again, you might have, uh, not you might have, you, we must have looked at diffusion. So what is quintessential to electrochemical transport is this particular mechanism of migration. This depends upon potential gradient and mobility, okay? So these are the two important uh, aspects that are introduced here. So what has been highlighted in the board are vector quantities. So let's look at this particular term that is determinant of migration. So you can, there are three, components to this term. So this term is indicative of the force on a particular ion, right? Um, so I've decomposed this term to three terms. This is indicative of force on a particular ion. This is a concentration of the ions per unit volume. So that will give you the force in if you multiply this term by this term, it'll give you the force of a volume element of the electrolyte. And this is the mobility which was defined in the previous lecture. It is in response to the electric field, we can define a drift velocity. So mobility is a measure of average velocity per unit electric field, per electric field. Okay, so these are the three quantities that go into this term. So uh, because you must have seen the analysis of these two terms in your previous classes, uh, at, when we are looking at the analysis of electrochemical transport, there'll be greater emphasis on how to analyze the term involving migration. Let us move on from molar flux. Molar flux is this term, that is moles per meter square per second. Okay, that is the molar flux, that's a vector quantity. But what we measure in an electrochemical system is the current, right? So current is an easy to measure signal. It's very, uh, even small uh, currents can be measured. So uh, it is useful, useful to bookkeep currents. How do you convert molar flux into current? That is by this equation, right? So you multiply the molar flux by the corresponding uh, charges, okay? And then from there, you can get to uh, current densities because this is per unit area. So what we mean by in small i is current density, capital I would be the total current. So current density can be expressed via this formula. So incorporating these terms 
into this equation, we will get an expression for current density and it has three terms. While there are three terms, if you look at this particular term, this has the summation of zi ci. Okay. So it is very hard to create situation in the bulk of the electrolyte where charge neutrality is not obeyed. Okay. So, so the bulk of the electrolyte is always charge neutral. Therefore, when you sum up all the charges present in the bulk of the electrolyte, that would turn out to be zero. Right? So this term can be eliminated because of the constraints of charge neutrality, because there's a huge energy penalty you can calculate. Okay? Uh, what is the energy penalty involved in um, not having charge neutrality? So the only regions where charge neutrality is where the charge is not neutral is just near the electrode. Okay, so only at the double layer, there is no charge neutrality, but in the bulk of the electrolyte, there is charge neutrality. So this term will turn out to be zero. So this term, the charge neutrality condition, this term is the charge neutrality condition. This term is expressed, charge neutrality is expressed in the following manner, because this is zero, we can eliminate this term and you're left with only two terms in the expression for current density. Of the two terms of relevance, you can create situations wherein concentration gradients can also be eliminated, okay, by stirring and few other mechanical um, factors which we impose on the electrochemical system we can eliminate charge concentration gradients. So if we eliminate concentration gradient, this term also goes to zero. And you are left with a single term from the three terms which we mentioned in the expression of current density. So this single term, which is this term, can be expressed in the following manner. Okay, you can why is this of uh, importance is because this expression is similar to what you have seen in current canning conductor, Ohm's law expression, right? So current is proportional to potential gradient and that proportionality constant is expressed in the, in the case of electrolyte using this term. Let's look at this term uh, in some detail. So, this is the conductivity of the electrolyte. So what goes into conductivity? The concentration of different charge species indicated by CI. If the concentration more, then the conductivity is more. The charge on a species, charge species, ions, is ZI, but we are squaring that term, right? So whether it's a negative ion or a positive ion, this zi squared will always be a positive quantity. The greater the zi squared, the greater will be the contribution to conductivity. And this is the mobility term. The greater the mobility, the conductivity will be greater. So there are three contributions to conductivity, concentration, mobility, and the square of the charge present in the system, okay? So all these terms summed up, uh, three terms summed up, will contribute to conductivity. The unit of conductivity is Siemens per meter inverse. Siemens is just ohm inverse, okay? So if you just, this is a derived quantity. So if you, uh, put all these things together, the units, SI units is Siemens per meter square, meter inverse. Let's look at this expression, this expression in one dimension. 
In one dimension, we can express the potential gradient in the following manner. The negative sign has been already incorporated. So if you incorporate that, you can express the potential uh, gradient in the following manner. Five at a particular x minus five at x equal to L divided by the length of relevance in one dimension. Okay, so that is this term is this term is current density as I mentioned current density is total current divided by the area of relevance. So the, all this is in one dimension. So this area we are uh, is perpend area vector is parallel to this one dimension and the area element is perpendicular to this single dimension. So this can further be rearranged in the following manner. So this is the potential drop that is V divided by I. Why are we expressing in this manner? Because we want to connect the Ohm's law in electrolyte to what you have seen in a current carrying conductor, V is equal to IR. In using that expression, um, we want to correlate that expression to what we see in the electrolyte. V by I would be R. All these terms are related to the property of the electrochemical system. This is the length of relevance. This is the area, um, area element that is perpendicular to the area vector. Area vector would be in the direction of this one dimensional coordinate. This is the conductivity. So if you because V by I is R. So if you express R in terms of quantities of relevance to electrolyte, you get this relationship. G is the conductance. So let's look at this. R is will be lesser if conductivity is greater. R will be greater if the potential drop is across a greater length. That also makes sense. And R will be lesser if the cross-sectional area is greater. Okay, So all your intuition uh, from a current carrying conductor is also carried to the electrolyte with this conductivity expressed uh, in the using the formula that was given in the previous slide. So greater the conductance, lesser would be your resistance. Let's move on. There are two consequences of charge neutrality. The charge neutrality constraint is given here, which helps you simplify the expression for current, right? And then the system we are looking at doesn't have any sources and sink in the bulk of the electrolyte. All the reactions will occur only at the surface of the electrodes, okay? So if you are considering a volume element in the bulk of the electrolyte, the current that comes in at a particular surface element goes out of that volume element, right? Therefore, del dot I uh, divergence of current density would be zero. Okay, so you it's important to interpret all these vectors, uh, vectorial uh, vector. You should have the physical interpretation of vector calculus, uh, vector calculus 
uh, clear. So you should be able to interpret divergence, gradient, and curl. Okay, so that's going to be important in uh, all your engineering analysis. So in this case, divergence of current density is zero. That means that what current that current density that is coming in into a volume element goes out uh, because there are no source and sink terms present in the volume element. So this term will also be zero. So we have the expression for I, we are going to put this and this together. When you put these things together, you have the term. This can be written in the following manner. So the central consequence becomes del square phi equal to zero. Okay. So this is the Laplacian operator. So this is the Laplace equation. Del squared phi is equal to zero. So let's just backtrack. How did we get here? Okay. So we got here by assuming that the concentration gradient in the system is zero. Okay. That can be. Uh, it's a good approximation because we can impose certain mechanical uh, conditions like mixing and good mixing and so on, because of which the concentration gradient term in the current expression is zero. Because of charge neutrality, the convective part, that is the third component, that is also zero. So you are left with only one term in the current expression. Because of this condition, which you should be able to physically interpret, putting these two things together, you get this term. And this is an expression of just the Laplace equation. Okay. So what is the validity or validity of the Laplace equation and when is this valid? valid? That, is, that is this um, last summary slide. So let's just look at the big picture. Okay, so we have the full equation involving three terms. Okay, there's a flow term, uh, kinetics, coupled concentrate, all these things are going to be important. Okay, so in the, a series of lectures, we will be looking at different limiting cases that are going to be of import. You do not worry about all these uh, things here. In this lecture, what we have focused is on this particular approximation to the full set of equations. Okay, so how did we arrive at the Laplace equation? We neglected concentration gradients. Therefore, the only thing that is of relevance is solving this equation to get phi. Okay, so that's important. Uh, limiting case, we will see the implication of this limiting case in the next few lectures. But as we are analyzing limiting cases, we will look at another limiting case in the next lecture, wherein we are going to see where, under which, under what condition migration is of no relevance. Okay. So in this case, concentration gradients were negligible or zero because of which only migration turned out to be the important effect. But we will see another limiting case wherein migration can be completely neglected. That we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.